Today I wanted to talk about an experience of studying abroad and specifically studying photography major. So I started my studies in Finland in Lahti. That's one hour away from Helsinki. It has been one of the best photography bachelor universities in Finland. After two and a half years, we have an uh, opportunity to do an exchange. I decided to apply for Royal Academy of the Art, which is in The Hague in the Netherlands, one hour away from Amsterdam. The differences between the Finnish university and the Dutch academy is that bachelor and master education is free in Finland. My exchange period was actually free, but after I decided to become a permanent student, I would obviously have to pay for semester fees. In total, my studies lasted about five years because I studied two and a half years in Finland. Then I did my exchange that was two and a half years more. And in the Netherlands, this bachelor course is usually for four years, but because I came in between a semester, I was doing this degree in two different schools. I remember that housing was very difficult to find. I remember looking through all the Facebook groups, through all Dutch platforms that would rent out rooms, apartments. I was not even dreaming of an apartment. I only wanted to share a room. And there was actually an incident where I wanted to share a room with a uh, five, 18 years old. And I was myself 27. So I already knew that it would not work out, but I was so desperate that I was ready to move in. The first apartment was a bit of a lucky incident that happened. I knew somebody who was doing an exchange in Finland and they knew somebody in the Netherlands that was going to do their exchange somewhere else so I could live in that apartment for the first semester. That was just behind the school, so that was literally like 500 meters. I could easily just get to know my surroundings and the school. It was actually a room, but it was renovated into being one apartment. So the only thing that I was sharing was the toilet. I had my own shower and I had my own kitchen, but if you would see the room, it was definitely not an apartment, but I was happy to get it because I knew that it was very difficult to get a place in The Hague. My second apartment was also a very lucky incident. Uh, I had a friend that was doing photography with me, not in my class, but somebody I knew around school, and they knew somebody who was looking um, a flatmate. So I kind of applied to share an apartment with them. We applied together for an apartment. Usually the apartments would either be already rented out, so they would be looking for one flatmate, or then you would have to apply for the whole apartment with somebody and because I didn't know anybody who was looking for an apartment that was very difficult so I would have to kind of blindly apply for rooms that I didn't know anything about but then luckily I met this girl Suna she was from Iceland and we just applied for this apartment and that was my place where I lived um, for the rest of my studies. I paid for about 450 euros for the room. It was a very big room. It was like 30 square meters. And then I had an attached small bedroom next to it. So definitely I had room for myself and I could actually build a home there. We shared uh, the kitchen, the shower, the toilet. I didn't mind sharing the apartment at all because we really got along with my flatmate and uh, it was a nice experience to share. Uh, people paid about 500 to 700 euros rent per month. The prices were insane. If you think about that, in Finland you can get one room studio apartment for 750 so in total the photography bachelor degree lasts for about four years I arrived during the second year in the middle of the second year so I didn't experience the first two years I'm not the right person to explain what happens in the first years but I did hear that during the first year everybody who applied for the class are in the same group and after the first year the teachers decide whether you are being chosen towards the fiction class or the documentary class so based on your level of photography, but also your style of photography, you will be chosen to either one of these groups. And once you are chosen on the second year, you will have your own class. So there will be two parts of the same class. The studies wouldn't really differ, but there would be some additional courses that would be either really focused on documentary or really focused on fiction. I don't remember the exact amount of the yearly fee, and it's probably also changed afterwards. But for EU students, people from the European Union, we would have to pay about 2,300 per year. That would be two semesters. I could pay it either monthly or yearly in total. I was in documentary and I must say that when I applied, I really thought that I would be in fiction. But then once I got chosen to documentary, later on I was looking at my images and I really knew that of course I was documentary. My photography is very documentary based. It was very interesting to notice that I was blind towards my own work and I was not aware of the categories or the, the aesthetics that it would fall into. 
The studies were a bit difficult for me in the beginning because my study phase in Finland was very different. In Finland, we would not have to redo any years unless we felt like we were not ready to graduate. So we had very smooth and easy education here where if you didn't return an essay, you could do it next month or you could do it in the next uh, semester or next period. It didn't really matter as long as you did it at some point. But in the Royal Academy of the Art, we really needed to return everything by the deadline and everything was very structured. And if you were struggling to keep up with this pain, if you felt overwhelmed, you might have to redo a year because you were not able to manage your time and your workload. And after doing the exchange, I had the opportunity to apply as a permanent student. I did an application with a motivational letter and I also showed my work and discussed with the teachers to explain why I should be chosen to be a permanent student. So once I got accepted to be a permanent student, I was given the option to do a couple of more extra courses that I did not manage to take because I was not in the school once they were given and they were very important based on methodology so the way you're photographing and how you're actually building the images in general this was a very major course that i'm happy that i took but it was very difficult and during that one course we would have one assignment per week so every week we would have one day of classes and during that day we would have to present work that we've done during that one week it was intense on top of this at the end of every semester we would have collectives collectives were a very short introduction to everything that you've learned during a semester. We would have to print everything that we've done during that semester, put it on a table on the walls. We would have at about an hour to really get everything done. Like there would be time slots that everybody was positioned in and people would then build up their own presentation in this room. You would have to present everything the best you can, obviously. This presentation would then result in you either passing the semester or then having to redo it or maybe redo something. You would have to kind of really sell your visual aesthetic and really sell your knowledge and what you've learned. Uh, you've shown all the courses that you've done, everything that you've written, everything that you've read during this semester and all the images that you've created. Also the process, so not only the final images, but the process, how you've taken the images, how you've sketched everything. And obviously everybody had a process book where we would show everything, like all the ideas, writings, how did we come to every conclusion. So it was a very big process and the day was huge and people rehearsed their presentation and they would have a speech to explain everything what they've learned and why they are really looking forward to the next semester. My life in the Netherlands was really similar to life in Finland. So the culture is pretty similar, but one that was really a shock for me was Dutch people don't really eat lunch. Culinary experiences were very different. Always at lunchtime, I was looking for places to eat warm food and Dutch people would just eat sandwiches or cookies or stuff like this. That was definitely a shock for me. In the Netherlands, I really loved small cafeterias, spring loops, which are secondhand shops and just biking everywhere. I really loved biking, which I haven't done in Finland because I have a car here now and obviously in winter time you can't do much biking i mean some do but that's really extreme so in the netherlands i didn't experience this seasonal depression at all because even in winter period sun would be shining and it would be always plus degrees so it would never go below zero which in finland is a very normal occurrence to have a minus degrees during winter time and um i have to say i'm, I'm kind of made for warmer countries or warmer climates so yeah that's something i do miss if you're looking to grow as a photographer and grow as a visual artist i do definitely recommend the royal academy of the art because firstly i really gained in experiences in seeing how others work giving and getting feedback and really pushing myself in a different way which I never got in the school in Finland so I was pushed beyond the uncomfortable situations to really know how to tell and explain and communicate my work to my audience but also to other people that I was working with so yeah we had a very tight community which I also had after school so we would have a lot of gatherings and get-togethers we would have weekly exhibitions around the city but also in Amsterdam and Rotterdam we visited Amsterdam and Rotterdam every other week just to see exhibitions and other events and I've, um, I've really been thinking about going back for a little while and work a bit on my projects. So that's all. I hope you gained some information that you wanted to know about studying a photography bachelor's degree in Europe.